And today's custom PC is fitted into the Sama V-Mesh white PC case. A very spacious PC case and easily fits the hardware inside. There's a nice mesh front panel for good air intake, two 140 millimeter case fans, and one 140 millimeter air exhaust fan, all ARGB and pre-installed with the case. Controlling the color scheme of the case fans is controlled by this button here. Beside the USB 3, microphone and headphone jacks, and a USB Type-C. The USB-C port is not in use because the motherboard does not support it, unfortunately. Releasing the side panel is as easy as prying it off. It's a toolless design with these little metal nubs on the side of the panel. Underneath the cables, there's a little fan hub that also controls the ARGB case fans. One nice thing about that hub is that there is a PWM control that extends to the motherboard, so you can still control the case fan speeds using the system BIOS. That's really great. And the front panel is also a toolless design. You just have to pry hard enough. And I'm gonna use two hands here so I don't break the glass. And here's a nice clean look at the inside. Underneath this Thermal Red Assassin Spirit V2 CPU cooler, there's a Ryzen 7 3800X CPU with eight cores and 16 threads. Beside that is 32 gigabytes of Timetech Pinnacle Conduit DDR4 3600 megahertz RAM. Over here we have an EVGA XC3 RTX 3070 graphics card with 8GB of GDDR6 memory. And the motherboard is a ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming 4 with some nice heat sinks and the inclusion of an M.2 Wi-Fi card with Bluetooth 4.2. In particular that's the Intel Dual Band Wireless AC3168 with some fairly moderate specs. It's not the best but not the worst and it'll get you by in a pinch if that's all you have. But maybe upgrading to something that supports Wi-Fi 6 would be better. And I meant to mention this before but this version of the EVGA card does come with a little boost in clock speeds. Underneath the graphics card in the M.2 NVMe port is a Timetech MS10 1TB NVMe solid state drive running at speeds of PCIe 3x4 and we currently have Windows 11 Pro installed on it. And onto the rear I.O. of the motherboard, we have a mouse and keyboard PS2 port, 6x USB 3.2 Gen 1, an HDMI port that we can't use with this CPU because there's no integrated graphics, the Wi-Fi antenna, gigabit RJ45 Ethernet port, audio ports, and on the 3070 we have 1x HDMI 2.1 and 3x DisplayPort 1.4a. And powering it all is this Corsair RM750 750 watt modular power supply. Now that we know a bit about the hardware inside this PC, let's check out the video encoding and video rendering benchmarks. So to make things a little bit more interesting, I decided to measure this against a 3700X and an RTX 3070 with a difference of 16 gigabytes of RAM. With a DaVinci Resolve 19 video render, using 11 minutes of raw 1080p footage, the 3800X came out on top by a difference of 12 seconds. And moving on to the Handbrake 1.9.0 CPU encoding time with 11 minutes of 1080p gaming footage under the Creator 1080p60 preset, the 3800X encoding time is 11 seconds faster than the 3700X. Testing the two GPUs against each other, the EVGA version of the 3070 came out 1 second faster than the Zotac version. The Zotac version of the 3070 also has a boost in clock speeds at 1740MHz. But the EVGA version beats it out by 1770 megahertz, just a little bit faster. So I suppose that's where the one second difference comes into play. I think that over time and maybe with longer projects, having the EVGA version of the card might be to your advantage. Thanks a lot for checking out our video today. Let me know in a comment if you're using a setup like this in 2025. Now let's check out the gaming performance. I hope you have a great day.